In this problem, we are, have the same scenario as in the previous problem, but now the pushing force is going to be um, 30 degrees below the horizontal. So the worker is pushing downwards and it still has a normal force, a force due to gravity, and a frictional force counteracting the movement of the crate. And I'm going to break down the pushing force here into its components so we can just work in our two axes of x and y since that's where um, the displacement is pointing uh, is along the positive x force. So um, redrawing this force diagram with um, the components of the pushing force, um, we'll see that this will be equal to the magnitude of the pushing force, Fp, times cosine of 30 degrees. And this vector here is the magnitude of pushing force times the sine of 30 degrees. And label the rest of these here, the normal force, the force due to gravity, and the frictional force. So um, as we did in the previous problem, we're going to set up um, two equations applying Newton's second law. And in both of these cases, the sum of the force is going to be zero because the acceleration in both directions is zero given by um, the crate is moving at constant velocity. So um, in the x direction, we have um, Fp cosine of um, theta, and just to save me some writing, we'll call theta our 30 degree angle, minus the force of friction. And the y direction, we have the positive y direction, the normal force, and in the negative y direction, we have the gravitational force and the y component of the pushing force. So, um, Fp cosine of theta is equal to um, the frictional force, which is given by the coefficient of friction, kinetic friction, mu k um, times our normal force. And we can find figure out what our normal force is here by moving over gravitational and um, pushing force component to the other side here. So we get Fg plus Fp sine of theta. And then we're going to substitute that into, into our expression up here. And so I might come down here and do that. So we have Fp cosine of theta is equal to mu k times fg plus fp sine of 
theta. And so um, in this first part, we're trying to calculate the magnitude of FP here. So I'm gonna wanna move um, this expression to the other side and pull out FP and isolate the variable. So we first have FP cosine of theta minus mu k fp sine of theta. You've got to remember to distribute that coefficient of friction. And on the other side, um, I'm going to substitute in for a force of gravity, um, our mg. So in this case, I can pull out my fp and divide by um, the expression that's left, which will be cosine of theta minus mu k sine of theta. And we get that fp is equal to mu k mg over cosine of theta minus mu k sine of theta. And now that we have our expression here, all we have to do is plug in the proper values that we were given in the previous problem. So the coefficient of friction was 0 0.25. Um, the mass of the crate was 30 kilograms. Um, G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And on the denominator of this expression, we have the cosine of 30 degrees minus 0 0.25 times the sine of 30 degrees. And when I calculate that all out, um, and again, using only two, rounding up to two significant figures, I get that the magnitude of the pushing force now has to be um, 99 newtons as opposed to 74 newtons in order to um, move this crate as a constant velocity. So this is our answer for part A. And now that we have that, we can start calculating the work um, for the various forces here. So in part B, it asks for, was the work um, done um, by this force as it's pushing um, to create 4.5 meters. So we're in part B. And what I'll call WP is equal to magnitude, the pushing force times the magnitude of our displacement. And the angle between them is now 30 degrees since um, we're pushing 30 degrees below the horizontal and displacement is along the horizontal. So we have 99 newtons times 4.5 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees. And I have that this is equal to um, 390 joules. And, and the next part, it asks us to calculate the work for the frictional force. So due to friction, will be equal to, um, go back here and look at our expression for friction. It's um, mu k times f of n. 
and we have our expression for f of n here. So um, we will use that to substitute into our expression of work here in a moment. And the friction is acting opposite of the displacement, so the angle between the two here is 180 degrees. And we have mu k um, times fg plus um, p sine of theta. Put some brackets around this. And um, similar, we just have S times negative one. So we can start filling in some things here. FG is going to be MG. So work through the friction will be um, 0 0.5. To five, the coefficient of friction times 30 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared um, plus um, our pushing force magnitude of that, which was 99 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. And all of this is in parentheses, multiplied times 4.5 meters times our negative one. And in the end, just like before, we have the work through the friction is um, equal to negative of the work due to the pushing force. So we have negative 390 joules. Um, the next part asks us to calculate um, due to normal force and gravity. And those haven't changed with respect to this displacement. Both of them are still um, at 90 degrees to the direction of the displacement. So there will be a cosine of 90 in their expression for work, which will zero them out. So our no force um, or work due to the normal force and work due to gravitation is zero. And so now we have everything we need to calculate the total work done on this crate. Um, it will be equal to WP plus WFR plus um, these two works, which are just zero. So, um, we have WP plus WFR, and that is equal to 390 joules minus 390 joules. So just like in the previous problem, we get the total work being done on this crate that's moving at a constant velocity is equal to zero.